when you do a modulation now you have your carrier and you have this modulation uh, what matters you say uh, you know the velocity is different for different frequencies the moment you have a pulse modulated on a carrier you can now talk about two types of velocities one is your phase velocity and the other one is your group velocity uh, phase velocity is here if I take a monochromatic wave the phase velocity is omega naught divided by beta okay so the phase velocity is like if I if I calculate if I plot beta versus omega omega by beta is a constant which is the speed of light right if I plot this for free space how would this plot look like straight line if it is free space there is nothing that is uh, in the free space which makes it dispersive so it is a straight line passing through the origin because omega by beta is c like this the slope of the straight line will give you 1 over c this is free space now in a medium if you plot the same curve this c becomes c divided by n and so what would this line look like uh, assume n is not a function of frequency okay assume for a minute that n is not a function of frequency so would it look like uh, of course there is no meaning to this negative so let me just take out that negative here uh, let's say this is the line in uh, free space in a medium if your n is not a, a function of frequency should it be inside this or outside this should it be this inside this so this is n over c because n is a number greater than 1 so slope has increased so in fact this this is called as a light line and any medium will have its beta versus omega inside the light line but this is assuming that you do not have n as a function of frequency but if n itself is a function of frequency what happens to this line does not remain a line it becomes a curve. So you will always have some curve I am I am probably showing this uh, you know the con uh, convexity of the curve wrong but that is how it is going to look like. Now you are operating at a specific omega naught okay at a specific omega naught with the spread delta omega so i should not be looking at the phase velocity which is omega by beta the phase velocity is the change for these phase uh, phase velocity tells you the speed with which wave fronts of constant phase will keep propagating that does not matter here in any more when you have a pulse with a certain spread what matters to you is what matters to you is the slope of this delta omega by delta beta or delta beta by delta omega. So, there you talk about group velocity. So, phase velocity is your omega by beta and group velocity is your d beta by d omega inverse. Uh, in principle we call it as I can also say it is d omega by d beta but it is not omega that is changing with beta it is beta that is changing with omega. So, you always have a d beta by d omega and inverse of that is your group velocity. So, to illustrate that uh, we have uh, this. So, this is how the phase velocity and the group velocity uh, uh, behave. Okay. So, this is just an animation picked up from uh, Wikimedia. You see this is how the pulse is propagating and if you keep looking at the, uh, the peak of the pulse, the speed with which the peak propagates is your group velocity, but that need not be the same as the speed with which the individual waves are propagating. 
Okay. So, the phase velocity can even be larger than uh, c, it does not violate relativity simply because uh, what matters is the speed with which the information propagates and that is group velocity and that is uh, going to be less than c. Okay. So, when we talk about dispersion we know that the source has a spectral width, modulation also creates a width each spectral component will travel with different velocity and what would matter is the group velocity. So, two ideas to be uh, understood before we talk about dispersion, one we always talk about the dispersion in terms of group velocity and second the spectral width means the width of the uh, width at the transmitter, it could be because of the source, it could be because of modulation. Okay. Now, we can talk about dispersion, material dispersion. Now, uh, of course, we already wrote that group velocity is, uh, I would rather write it as d beta by d omega inverse. We can calculate this group velocity. What is the information known to us to calculate this group velocity? What are we trying to calculate? In your beta versus omega curve, let me draw choose a different scale and say that this is your beta versus omega curve and you are having a pulse whose modulated at omega naught. The pulse is modulated such that there is a spectral width around this omega naught and you want to calculate how much is the speed difference between this part of the pulse and this part of the pulse. Okay, the pulse has a width and you are trying to find out the speed difference. So, you are trying to find out you are not trying to find out the difference in beta, but you are trying to find out the differences because of the group velocity d beta by d omega. Okay. So, calculation of that is just now algebraic material handbook of materials will always give us n versus lambda refractive index as a function of lambda. People have done this historically in optics and it is very well known information for silica of course, doping will change the n versus lambda. So, depending on the doping, what why are we talking about doping? To get an inter index contrast in fiber, your core has a different doping and then the cladding. So, your n versus lambda is different for core and cladding. So, we should keep all that in mind, but then n versus lambda is known, but once you know n versus lambda, you can always get n versus omega. Okay. But the point is we want to ki kind of find out what is the dispersion in because of uh, because of the material uh, property which means that we are not actually looking at calculating d beta by d omega that is group velocity we are trying to find out between two spectral components what is the delay okay so we start with group velocity that is uh, beta is omega by c so you just do a differentiation and this differentiation is very straightforward 1 by c omega dn by d omega plus n of omega. And what is the range of uh, d omega I need to consider or rather what is the range of frequencies over I need to consider this d n by d omega over your spectral width. Uh, now, I would like to write it in terms of lambda because n versus lambda is what is usually known in the handbook because omega in that sense is uh, does not change in the medium what changes is the lambda right. So, usually you know n versus lambda. So, d n by d omega is actually d n by d lambda d lambda by d omega and uh, I know that lambda is 2 pi by omega 2 pi c by omega. So, d n by d omega is uh, to that. So, I can calculate d lambda by d omega which is d lambda by d omega is 2 pi c by omega square which is what I am substituting here which is with a negative sign and d n by d lambda. So, I wrote this in terms of d n by d lambda. Now, I can substitute that here. So, when you put it back you get n as a function of lambda naught minus there is a omega here. So, that omega cancels. So, you have 2 pi c by omega which is again a lambda minus lambda d n by d omega uh, d n by d lambda. Okay, this is just algebra there is nothing here. But I know the group velocity now depends not just n, it depends on d n by d lambda. 
So, the time taken by the pulse dispersion is finally, we how do we define dispersion? Yesterday we did that dispersion is the uh, spread in the pulse. So, first of all I need to find out the time taken by the pulse to travel a distance L. So, if group velocity is uh, V g time taken is distance divided by group velocity and I already know what is 1 by V g. So, I am just, just multiplication here. So, L by C this. So, what is the information I need now to go about calculating the spread? I need to know d n by d lambda. So, n versus lambda is known. Now, this is lambda in micrometer. Okay. So, this is something that is shaped like this and we are picking the region 600 to 1500 because that is your range of communication wavelength. This is how it is looking like, but this is still not giving you the spread. What does this give you? This just gives you the time taken for a pulse to go from one point to the other point. This is just this. What do you actually need? We need delta tau, the difference in time. Okay. So, the difference in time is d tau by d lambda delta lambda and tau is a function of lambda. So, d by d lambda of tau is L by C n lambda this is what we wrote right now. So, assume that the spectral width at the transmitter is delta lambda. Again I will remind you this is not just the source width this is also because of the modulation. Then each of these spectral components will travel with different velocity. So, the spread because of the fact that different lambdas see different velocity is given by d tau by d lambda delta lambda. So, if I do a, a differentiation what do I get? I get L by C n minus this is n as a function of lambda naught. Okay. So, uh, let us differentiate this. Uh, so, this becomes d n by d lambda minus lambda you are differentiating with respect to lambda naught. So, minus lambda naught d square n by d lambda naught square minus d n by d lambda with respect to free space wavelength we are differentiating. Do not think lambda naught is a constant, lambda naught is a free space wavelength that is all. So, what you got is minus L by C lambda naught d square n by d lambda naught square sorry multiplied by delta lambda naught is of course. So, I have n as a function of lambda this is what roughly the variation was looking like n as a function of lambda, but what I seem to need is d square n by d lambda square which means I have to differentiate this first something like this is what it is going to look like this is all not to scale just to show you the shape. Okay. It is somewhere flat here, so it is peaking somewhere here and uh, this is first differential. This is roughly how d n by d lambda naught is going to look like and uh, the second differential d square n by d lambda naught square is going to look like this because if you differentiate this further again it will go through 0 somewhere here. And there is a specific wavelength at which it is going through 0 and that is 1.27 micrometer exactly for silica fiber. Okay. Uh, of course, doping will change it slightly here and there, but typically it is around 1.27. This 1280 is a very interesting uh, uh, wavelength because, because 1280 we talked about 1280 nanometer in some other context also. What was that? We said commercial standard single mode fiber has a cutoff wavelength at around 1280 nanometer. So, that 1300 and 1550 nanometer both will propagate as a single mode. Okay. And this is how you define. So, this number is what we call as d m the material dispersion. Okay. So, if d m is plotted versus lambda. So, this is just d square n by d lambda square. Now, you need to multiply this with uh, L by C for unit length. Uh, 
lambda naught by c. So, you, you need to do this L by c lambda naught d square n by d lambda naught square uh, delta lambda naught is uh, delta tau. Usually, this d m which is the delta tau is measured in. So, this is what you call as d m. You do this divided by L divided by delta naught delta lambda naught. So, that you get this as minus 1 by c lambda naught d square n by d lambda naught square. This now depends only on the material, whereas uh, you know length is a variable and it is directly proportional to length. So, I can do a per unit length measurement. Similarly, the spectral width depends on the source that I am using. So, I can do a definition in terms of unit spectral width. So, even though delta tau is material dispersion, its unit is this is time, right? So, its unit should be seconds per you measure it in meter, meter, which is second per meter square, or typically it is written in picosecond or nanosecond per kilometer nanometer. Kilometer refers to the length of the fiber, nanometer refers to the spectral width that is a typical unit that you would see either picosecond or nanosecond. And that number in the units of picosecond per uh, I mean I do not have a y axis number. So, I am not telling you what that is, but in that normalized values it is again crossing 0 at 1.27. On one side it is positive on the other side it is negative. What is the implication of positive and negative we will come to when we talk about waveguide dispersion also. I leave you with an exercise to be solved before next class. Spectral width of an LED is 25 nanometer, central wavelength is 880 nanometer. Find d m in the units of either picoseconds or nanoseconds per kilometer nanometer. Not over, repeat this for a laser for 2 nanometer. Uh, I have given you the answer here. Repeat this for a laser with a center wavelength 1550. Well, because you have a 25 nanometer width, do not give your answer per nanometer, give it in terms of nanosecond per kilometer. give your answer in nanosecond per kilometer or picosecond per kilometer. And uh, in addition to actually calculating these numbers, give it give some thought why these numbers are so and what happens uh, when you use an LED at it. Both these wavelengths are used for communication. LEDs are also used for communication, short distance we have we have always discussed this with 25 nanometer kind of width it is used for communication. Lasers are also used, but at long distance 1550 nanometer. Now, you can tell you this can tell you what is the extent of broadening produced by material dispersion in either of these cases.